What's going on guys, it's Elias. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be covering the 2019 Volkswagen Atlas. Now I never expected to make a video on the Volkswagen Atlas. It's kind of a generic, boring SUV looking thing if you ask me. I never even knew it existed until I walked up to the Hertz rent-a-car and asked for an SUV because I knew I was going to be traveling a lot and they offered a Volkswagen Atlas. So here we are. So the reason I'm, I'm filming this review is because I was actually fairly impressed over an SUV I never expected, I never even knew existed. So here we are. So in today's video we're going to cover a bunch of things. We're going to cover the things I like, the things I don't like, we're going to cover this thing, how it does on-road on long highway trips, and how it does off-road, because we do take this thing off-road a bunch of times. So if uh, you want to take a look at how this Atlas does, be sure to watch to the end, grab a coffee, grab a beer. Let's have some fun, guys. So the first impressions of this car. When I first got into it, you know, I didn't expect much. I walked up to it. It looked like a boring mom wagon. Honestly, if you ask me, it looks like a oversized minivan on stilts. But I got into it. The interior is actually pretty damn good. It's, the leather's nice. It's got perforated leather. The steering wheel's pretty nice. And it was, once I turned the car on, it was a nice V6 growl. One of the best things about this car is that the fact that it is offered with a naturally aspirated V6. And if you are going to buy this car, I definitely recommend you get the V6. It's one of the best selling points in my opinion. Very few vehicles in this class are sold with a V6 anymore. You can get the Honda with the V6 and naturally aspirated. Uh, you can get this car with the V6 naturally aspirated and it's really, really nice. Uh, after I picked up the car, I went to Walmart to buy some water and other supplies for the long road trips ahead. And honestly, I was pleasantly surprised about the, of the power. So getting off the line, just as we're doing right now, the car has more than enough power to get out of its own way. I mean, it's, it's a fairly big car. It could seat up to seven people. So to give you an idea, and it's, it drives actually pretty nice. Zero to 60, it's not that bad. And I was pretty impressed. Now, one thing we'll talk about is the aerodynamics and getting above 80 miles an hour starts becoming a challenge. But uh, I was pretty impressed. So first impressions, nice interior, nice and comfortable. Nice and lumbar support, by the way. Love the seats that this car comes with. The lumbar support in the driver's seat, adjustable. Uh, it's got some nice bolstering on it. I've spent 1,500 miles in this car in the last four days. 1,500 miles, that's a lot of hours. I could, that's probably 30 hours of seat time. And I can tell you, these seats are really, really good. So if you're gonna buy this car, get the upgraded seats, you'll thank me later. All right, on to the first trip we took this car on. And we took this car on a trip to Death Valley. So we went to Death Valley, and if you know anything about Death Valley, it is one of the hottest areas in, in the world, right? So luckily we came in the winter. Uh, it's currently March, middle, middle March. So it's not super cold and it's not warm, but it did get up there on close to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, that's fairly warm up there. The car had no issues at all. We were climbing up hills, going down hills. We took this off-road. In fact, one of my favorite parts of the road trip was what I call switchbacks, these little canyon roads to get from the town of Stovepipe uh, Furnace, or, or I forget the exact name, but there's a small town in Death Valley, to the charcoal kilns. Now, the charcoal kilns are super ancient. If you're ever in Death Valley, you should go there because it's, it's awesome to get there. Now, you do need an SUV to get there because you do go off-road. Uh, before you get off-road, you, you do go through these switchbacks, and this car took it very, very well. It drives very well for such a large car, and uh, as you see, as you see in these in these footage, it's, it's it's literally canyon carving with a very large SUV, and in sport mode. And yes, this does have different modes. I was pretty impressed. I had a ton of fun in this car, and uh, again, one of the best, most impressive, and, and best parts about it was the fact that we did that, and then we went off road. Now, of course, on the way there and on the way back, it's a ton of highway driving. So you're on the highway for, for many, many hours, hours at a time. And one of the things that I, I really didn't think I was going to use was the lane keep assist and the adapt, adaptive cruise control or radar guided cruise control. But man, on these long highway stretches, they are both very welcome technologies. And I do love the fact that this car brought it. I was able to kind of not zone out, but kind of relax a little bit and driver fatigue was way down. Like I said, I spent 30, about 30 hours driving in this thing and we 
basically never stopped. We went Death Valley, and then we went to uh, Zion National Park, and then we went to the Grand Canyon. I mean, hours and hours and hours of road trip, and this car never disappointed. And the fact that it had lane keep assist, it's a very good lane keep assist as well. It does a very good job of judging the distance between you and the next car over, and also keeping you between the lanes. It does have a right leaning bias a little bit. I don't know why. But, you know, maybe it's very conservative. It's a conservative car, so maybe that's why. Um, but, yeah, I was pretty impressed. And driver fatigue was down. I was super comfortable. Not much to complain about there. Very well companion to have on a long-distance road trip. So we talked about how it does on switchback canyon roads. We talked about how it does on highways. How does it do off-road? Well, way better than I expected. So this actually has, like I said, modes. And I put it on off-road mode. And in off-road mode, it has lane, not lane, it has hill descent control. So as you're going down a hill, it actually uses the anti-lock braking system to brake different brakes and make sure you're braking, like the car brakes at a very low speed down a hill. Now you definitely want that because the tires on this car are not necessarily off-road rated tires, but they do a pretty decent job from what I saw. Now we didn't take this over to any kind of boulder crawling or rock crawling you need a proper truck for that or like a Raptor that just passed by or my Colorado ZR2 but we did do some pretty crazy crazy stuff so my wife Jane she actually was in the car with me and some of the time she was like oh my god we shouldn't be here we're gonna get stuck but this SUV did really really well for itself and again for its size I was pretty impressed and again very very comfortable on the highway but kind of capable off-road now I wouldn't be taking this to anything crazy but if you ever have to go through a fire road or a gravel road, or we even took this to a dry lake bed by Pahrump, if you ever, Pahrump, Nevada, if you ever in that area. And this car did perfectly fine. And actually I was having a little bit too much fun. I was going a little too fast, getting a little sideways. And that's not something I expected to do in, in a vehicle like this, but it did it very, very well. All right, so let's talk about the positives and the negatives. So the positives, I love the fact that this is a V6. The V6 growl makes it so good. From zero to about 70 miles an hour, you got more than enough power. You have that little V6 growl that you have when you accelerate, you can take it up to red line. The transmission is extremely responsive. You could actually control it with the stick here and it does very, very well. And again, the comfort of the interior. Love, love, love the interior, very comfortable. Really nothing I complain about in the interior at all. All very, very positive. Love the space. We stocked up, we got, we had a big case of water, we had emergency supplies, we had medication, we had a first aid kit. Like I said, we were going to the desert, we went to Death Valley, uh, through Mojave Desert, we went to all kinds of different parks that were very remote. And it's always nice to know that you're able to have a vehicle that has everything that you need, no, no matter what, and a vehicle that you can always rely on to get you in and out of very remote places. No cell phone service, none of that stuff. So those are the positives. So some of the negatives. Well, while this does have adequate power, it does run out of juice at the higher miles per hour. I'm talking about 80, 90, 100 miles an hour. And the reason is because this thing has the aerodynamics of a brick. It's basically a flying brick here and kind of expected for a car this size, but it does affect it negatively. At about 80 miles an hour, you get a lot of wind noise. You get a lot of, you know, you feel the wind pushing back on you. So you kind of have to give it more gas to get any, any kind of speed going. So that's something to keep in mind. The other thing is, if the aerodynamics was a little bit better, we would have had better gas mileage. We average about 22, 23 miles to the gallon, and that's including off-road, on-road, highway, and going through the Las Vegas Strip. So, you know, it's not too bad, but I think it could be better if they redesigned the aerodynamics a little bit. You know, I'm not an engineer, so they, uh, for, for whatever reason, they designed it the way they did. They may or may not improve on it, but it's something to keep in mind. The other one negative I'm, I'm nitpicking here is the fact that there's a lot of rattle in this car. Now keep in mind this is a rental car. It's got 17,000 miles, well, 18,000 miles now because I put about 1,500 miles myself. Some people take it off-road, I'm sure. I took it off-road a bunch. So there are some rattles, a lot of squeaks in here, a lot of rattles. So the build quality may not be as good as, as expected, but it's just something to keep in mind if, uh, if you own a car. I'm not too well versed with Volkswagens. I don't know how well they're built anymore. I know from the 90s Volkswagen era, they were not very well built at all, but maybe they improved, I don't know. So in conclusion, what do I think? Well, the fact that I even took the time to make a video on this SUV 
goes to show you that I really enjoyed it. I think it's a really good SUV. For this trim level, this is an SEL, which has the leather seats and a lot of technology and things like that. SEL, the V6, is about $43,000. Now, you can get that for, you can get this car for much less if you haggle, if you, if you go to dealerships. There's incentives sometimes, or a lot of times. Volkswagen's doing a good job to, to try to, I guess, re-image itself after the whole diesel gate problem. So, if you go and take a look, they're taking a look at SUVs, you know, you're taking a look at the Honda Passport, the Honda Pilot, the Ford Explorer. This is the kind of vehicle that would compete with those, those cars, and I think, Honestly, this deserves a look. So, would I buy this car? Well, I don't know. Again, I'm not too sure about Volkswagen long-term reliability. But if I were to lease something, hey, this is not a bad deal. If you're gonna take a take the kids to the school school run, if you have a whole bunch of kids, again, the seat seven, two here, three in the middle, two in the back, tons of space for stuff. Not a bad car to be uh, SUV to have around. And the fact that I took it off road and it took the took the beating that it did and it did it really really well very impressive so that pretty much wraps it up guys I, I again very impressed with, with the SUV I'm impressed enough to make a video on it I hope you guys enjoyed the video I hope I helped you uh, inform you on the Volkswagen Atlas and why I think it's a great car or a great SUV it's an often I think overlooked SUV because it's not as popular as the other ones but this does deserve a look all right guys thanks for watching I'll catch you next time peace